Hey guys, the Wild Driver right here. So it's been a while since my last upload, and as you can see, uh, we're in Logic World today. So this time I built, instead of the clickbaity video previously where I've said I built a line drawer in Logic World where it was like Y equals MX plus B and I could change the slope on the fly, this is a, you know, Bresenham's line drawer. So this is taking two points and connecting them with the straightest line between it. Uh, now I have the server set for 1000 TPS right now. So what I can do is go ahead and reset this. And then uh, we'll just change the screen to all that color, I guess. And then we'll draw a dark blue line instead on top of it. And now what you'll see is we started at 24 1, which is our starting position, X naught, Y naught. And this, when we clock this, is going to be extremely fast. We're at 1,000 ticks per second. When I clock this, we're going to go from uh, this value here to 114 here. And you're going to see a line just boom right across the screen. Anyway, so why don't we do that? Um, all I have to do is click this, and I want to kind of stand back so you can see it. Actually, here, I have an idea. Why don't I do this? Put the... Where can I actually see this? We'll do it. We'll do it like this. And just connect this right into here. Boom. Okay. Ready? And boom. Now you can see we ended at 114, which is exactly what we should have ended at. So if I come back here and just toggle this guy off, we'll flip in a new point that I have just set up here randomly. Let's change the color to being, um, we'll make it black. We'll draw a black line on, the, on that. And we'll reset this. So now you'll see that we are at 1-0 right now, and we're going to go to 5-2. Or sorry, eight zero, and we're going to five two. That is a shitty line. Let's do a better line. Okay, let's try that. Um, reset to that, and now we'll send it. Boom. So we have a line drawer that seems to work pretty nicely here, and it's quick, and we got color. The only issue is. This save with the screen is 4.5 megabytes, and when I delete the screen, it goes down to 1.5 megabytes, which means this screen alone is three megabytes of world. Um, and a lot of that has to do with these uh, D flip flops in there and whatnot. Uh, so this is not a very efficient way of doing things. And so because of that, there is somebody named Cheese in the Logic World Discord server who created a mod that has displays. Unfortunately, unfortunately the displays are monochrome, and they have no global reset like this does, but um, you can kind of get around that. Um, but with the monochrome, it, it expands it for like the same size screen in game is like 256 by 256 instead of this being 32 by 32. So let's go check that out now. Okay, so here we are in game, and you can see that I have a line drawn on the screen. So with the screen modded in, it takes X, Y input, clock, and data, which for a single color doesn't really make sense to have both clock and data. But either way, um, what this is now doing is it's updating the screen every uh, frame and not every tick. And the issue with that then uh, is your game has to be slowed down so that the display can update everything, otherwise you're going to skip pixels like it did here. It's not the line drawer fucking up, it's the display not rendering it because of the way it's modded in on the client side. So I believe the proper way to fix this is to have the mod act like memory, and use uh, the memory can update every tick, which uh, people have done for me. That um, I have a mod here, uh, 64k RAM, and a 32 by 32 register file that people have modded in for me that update every tick. Every time it gets a clock, it'll it'll update the internal state. But since it's RAM, it's not displaying anything, right? So, but with this being like a graphic RAM, we want the graphic RAM to update at the rate that the whole simulation of Logic World is running at, which would be 60 FPS or whatever the internal state is of Logic World. So Logic World would be requesting the state from the RAM saying, hey, what are you displaying right now? And then it would update the screen every 60 FPS instead of a thousand TPS. And this way you could run this much faster, but because of that limiting factor, I can't anyway. Also with the screen, there's no global reset. And I don't have a circuit to do that, so we just grab it and press escape, and we're good. So what I can do for you is uh, first I have to do a server simulation dot rate. I'm running at 60, I believe, right now, but I'm going to run down to 50, and I hope 
this is slow enough now where the it can draw this draw that without skipping pixels. And yeah, so you can see like uh, using the modded component the screen like it's it's a double edged sword. Like we get a bigger screen with more uh, capabilities. The issue is the way it updates versus the other one that I showed you in the first video clip uh, was great. Like it it updated um, when I whenever I clocked it right. And you can see this one even still fucked up in the middle there for some reason. It like there's a lag spike and it just messed up the middle. Um, and like that's the display, that's not the render. And it's done. So, um, I don't know what to think of this yet. I think once this mod is improved, we get color displays and they update per tick and not per frame. I think we will get a better experience. And then I will use these dedicated. But until then, I'm probably still gonna use that crappy handle display. And um, be limited to 32 by 32, but at least it can run really, really freaking quick. And then when those displays uh, get modded in, it's just swap them out and we're good to go. Uh, so I think that's what I'm going to do. And uh, yeah, if you still made it up to this point, thanks for watching. And if you want, stick around and I'll explain a little bit more about the circuit. Alright, for all of you that kind of want some explanation of what's going on here, uh, um, thanks for sticking around. Um, so what we got going on here is we're taking X0, Y0, and X1 and Y0, 1. And what we're doing is... X0, Y0 is the starting position, and X1, Y1 is the ending position. And what we want the computer to do, or this machine to do, is compute the line between those two points. And we want it to be the straightest line, and we want it to be um, reliable. So every time we run it, it's the same line. It's not shifting where it's doing some of the points. It's the same thing every time. We want consistency out of this. Um, the other thing is, people ask, well, that's pretty easy to do. You could just use a divider. Okay, um, divider is painfully slow so anytime we can avoid division in an algorithm the faster it's going to be and when we're drawing lines across the screen and we're going to need to draw several lines to draw an image maybe render a cube right you're going to need 12 lines uh well, well you don't want that to be slow you want that to be fast enough where you can at least maybe hit 15 fps 30 fps 60 fps i mean graphics cards nowadays are doing huge ass matrix transforms and all this crap going on and they're hitting 100 plus fps pro no problem in 140 uh, uh 1440p games so the goal here is to try to render stuff to the display as fast as possible and so that includes finding algorithms that minimize time such as getting rid of uh, division and we get stuff like Bresenham's line algorithm out of the Okay, so rant over. What is Bresenham's line drawing algorithm? Well, obviously it's an algorithm that connects the straightest line between two points, but it does not include any sort of anti-aliasing. There are algorithms out there that do anti-aliasing, like Wu's algorithm, all sorts of other crap. Um, that's beyond the scope of this video. It's also beyond the scope of me right now because it requires plotting multiple lines or points simultaneously, or being able to queue them up to be pointed, be uh, plotted before you compute the next few points. It's it requires a little bit more work and thought. Anyway, so this happens to be Bresenham's line drawing algorithm, and I will bring up the algorithm, the exact version that I'm using. Um, give me one second, I'll be right back. Okay, so I got the algorithm here, and it looks like this. So the idea here is we can generate the increment x and increment y flags as the sign of the subtraction of b minus a. And then we take dx, which is b minus a, the absolute value of that. And dy is the absolute value of b minus a in the y. So you can see the notation is a little weird. Um, we say x a y is defined as dx greater than dy. Uh, CMPT is the maximum of dx or dy. So whichever one is greater, we're picking it. So if dx is five and dy is three, we're set to d CMPT gets dx. If three and five were, if x was three and y was five, then the compare it gets dy. So we swap the condition. Uh, increment d is negative two, so that's why I shifted by two. Uh, the absolute value of dx minus dy, and ink is the same thing two times that, but then I don't have to uh, do an inversion on the multiply by negative two. <coughs> the error is ink d plus cmpt. So we take ink compare t and ink d and generate this err function or err value, and then x is equal to a dot y and y is equal to a dot y. So what we're doing is we're taking the initial x and y coordinates, a and 
y, so it's, you can call it x1 and the y1, right? Or x0 and y0, I should say. And we're going to say x and y is equal to that. So what is x and y? It's like the current position. So we can see all this shit from lines 1 to 14 is just the setup. It's the uh, combinational logic, you can say. And then here in the while loop, the moment we get a loop, it's iterative. You know, you need a register, you need to update stuff. So we go from com combinational to loop and sequential. And so that's how my board is broken up. All the stuff on this board is combinational. All the stuff on that yellow board is loop. And then we do this function where it says while compare t is greater than or equal to zero. So you can say the moment it is negative one, you're done. That's why I compare that to negative one and send it out to be done. I'm going to say while it's while CMPT is greater than zero, I'm going to plot the first point. I'm going to decrement one from CMPT. And then I'm going to check these three statements. And inside these three statements, I either do I do one arithmetic operation inside every if statement. And I only take one if statement. Therefore, it's only ever one arithmetic operation being done per cycle, which makes this very inefficient. In the Wikipedia entry, you'll see that this is not the same and that Wikipedia has several arithmetic operations being done inside of one if statement. And this does, it splits this out into more if statements, but less arithmetic per if statement. So because of that, we get a faster loop. So you can see in either one, we're either x is equal to, we're either incrementing x by, uh, you know, one, or we're either adding plus or minus one to x. What that means is, so increment x came from the sign here. So what we're saying is we have a program counter, we're either incrementing x or decrementing x. And that doesn't change throughout this whole thing. So that's just true from, or not true from the beginning. Same with y. So depending on this, we're, either, we're saying either increment or decrement x, else we're incrementing this register or incrementing this register. So because of that, we're doing this very simple loop um, where we can do all these checks in parallel. Like they, uh, you unroll the loop, you do them all in parallel. And then you just move on to the next part where then you compared is updated again and you, you move on again. So that is this loop going on right here. You see I'm generating absolute value of absolute value of dx minus absolute value of dy. I think, um, absolute value of dx minus dy, but dx and dy are absolute value themselves right there. So, And then I take that and I either multiply it by negative 2 or multiply it by 2 to then move on from there. So that's what this is doing, and here are the two program counters, like I said, x and y. And that's how this whole thing works. So if you stuck around till the end here, thank you so much. If you, uh, I would appreciate you leaving a like on the video, and uh, obviously if you stuck around this long, uh, give it a subscribe, or give me a subscribe because uh, you're, you're still here. Like, why else would you be here if you didn't like the stuff I'm doing? Um, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. I could do a tutorial on this. It will take a long time because I just have the knowledge where I could crank this out in a 30 minute to an hour long build and it will take other people a month to do the same thing so I probably would have to do a whole tutorial series building up all the smaller components I needed to the point where I can just stick them together to build this um, but if you guys are kind of interested in a tutorial series like that in Logic World I can do it I just want to know that there's interest um, but yeah uh, thanks for watching I'll see you guys next time